In an October 23rd headline, the Washington Post observed Biden's critics hurl increasingly vulgar taunts. The story is a reference to the proliferation of this chant among all others. It is, as is widely known by now, a euphemism derived from an NBC sports reporter either intentionally or accidentally misinterpreting a NASCAR crowd chanting F. Joe Biden as Let's Go Brandon, a reference to driver Brandon Brown who won that day's race. As the Post headline conveyed, the chant has spread far and wide. Social media has effectively circumvented mainstream media attempts to block the chant at public events, as at the World Series. It has become irrepressible at sporting events, now popping up on sports jerseys, on commandeered electronic highway billboards, and businesses. But the chant reached a new level of controversy on October 30th, when the Associated Press reporter Colleen Long tweeted, That feeling, when you're trying to go on vacation and then the pilot says the very thing you were working on over the loudspeaker, and you have to try to get him to comment, but then almost get removed from the plane. The Southwest pilot on her flight uttered the Let's Go Brandon chant on the PA. He is now the subject of leftist derision, calls for his firing or spreading. The airline said in a statement, quote, Southwest does not condone employees sharing their personal political opinions while on the job serving our customers. It said it is conducting an internal investigation. In its October 23rd piece about vulgar taunts directed at Joe Biden, the Washington Post acknowledged vulgarity is part and parcel of politics, but it added the current eruption is on another level, far more vulgar and widespread. The paper seems to have a short memory. I'm going to say one thing, Trump. I'm angry. Yes, I am outraged. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. When I say Trump, you say Trump. You know, Ivanka, that's a beautiful photo of you and your child, but let me just say, one mother to another, do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless <laughs> He listens to you. To suggest a double standard does not adequately describe the bipolarity of mainstream media reaction to taunts against a Republican president versus a Democratic one. To her credit, the AP reporter who heard the pilot comments on the Southwest flight quoted in her story a political scientist and psychoanalyst, Sanley Renshaw. She writes, quote, He cited the Afghanistan withdrawal, the southern border situation, and rancorous school board debates as situations in which increasing numbers who were not vocally anti-Biden now feel that how American institutions are telling the American public what they clearly see and understand to be true is in fact not true. The psychoanalyst, quote, is a mild way of saying Americans are tired of being lied to. As long as Americans remain protected by the First Amendment, which some say is threatened by big tech and its Democratic allies, these kinds of taunts, whether they are directed at Republicans or Democrats, may be a good thing because they provide a culture-wide relief valve to vent building pressure. It is in those countries where such expression is forbidden that the pressure builds to an inevitable explosion. Doug McKelway for The Washington Examiner.